Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to this awesome, uh, wonderful Dunamite experience right here at the Dunamis Seventh Adventist Church, right out of Brooklyn, New York. And we want you to know that all of you are part of the Dunamite family, the place where the power resides. And as my uh, guest or guest today would say, the place where we inspire, motivate, and add value. And we bless God for that. Welcome to this experience. And um, from wherever you're coming from, I know persons are joining us from Canada, all over the United States, in the Caribbean, Jamaica, all of where you're coming from, you're at the right place. This is the place where we take evangelism to the new era and indeed change lives in the process. We are delighted to have a powerful, well-trained, well-experienced guest today. Um, in fact, she's no longer a guest, but she is indeed a part of the Dunamite family. Um, Janelle, Janelle uh, Sashana Salmon is a follower of Christ. I'm making efforts to pronounce that, right? She's a follower of Christ and an internationally trained uh, communication specialist. Her passion for communication was nurtured at the Northern Caribbean University where she pursued a bachelor's of arts in mass communication with emphasis in journalism. After that, God was so good to her that she was awarded a full scholarship to London to study strategic communication uh, in London, the School of Economics and Political Science. Janelle's uh, career in communication has led her to build a track record of designing. And of course, what you see on our screen just now is a part of her product or produce. And of course, she has implemented, evaluated, effective communication plans that are geared towards strengthening numerous brands across the world. And of course, even more immediate, uh, she has done that for the Governor General of Jamaica, Cuba, London, uh, Jamaica Investment Promotions Agency at the Ministry of National Security, and among others. This lady has served tremendously all over the world. And in fact, her, her skills have made room for her. And of course, she's involved in the digital marketing of, of um, in, in social media space as well. She's a, she takes pleasure in twinning both her passion for communication and evangelism to enhance the ministry of the Seventh Adventist Church uh, which she has been a member for over 18 years. Uh, her mantra is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And she's married to her hobby and best friend, Dean Salmon. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, friends all, uh, have our guest now as she presents to us. Please address us here at the Dunamite family. Oh, Pastor Francis, thank you so, so very very much for that introduction. I, it's, it was a mouthful. <laughs> I'm really happy to be sharing with the Dunamite family. Really, really happy to be sharing with you all. And today we are going to be having a discussion. I am not privy to the comments on Facebook and YouTube. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask elder or even pastor to apprise me if there's any question on Facebook, if there are any questions on YouTube, to just let me know over the Zoom space. But for those of you who are on Zoom, don't think you're going to be sitting there comfortably. <laughs> this is going to be an interactive session. You are going to be required to do a few things and you are going to also be required to ask of me any questions that you may have just looming in your minds, all right? So let's just get right into it. Let's get right into it. For today, we are going to be 
focusing on the theme, let's resurrect. It's resurrection time. So let's resurrect our digital evangelism. But first, let's just establish some ground rules. Please mute your mics, <laughs> unless you're speaking, of course. I'm also going to ask you uh, to give me your undivided attention. Be present. That's all I ask of you. And please do not be afraid to engage me. This is a learning space. We're going to be learning for the next hour or so. And a part of learning is inquiry. So I invite you to ask your questions. And in this space, there are absolutely no silly questions. If you have a question, well, if you're on the Zoom platform, that is, please raise your hand. Pastor, Elder, I'm going to ask you to help me with this. Help me to identify anyone who would have raised their hands. So, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, let us start talking about all things digital marketing, digital evangelism. Let's go. What is it? What is digital evangelism? I know since COVID, uh, this, this, this term has been a buzzword, a buzz, buzz term, digital evangelism. People are bolstering their digital evangelism. But what exactly is it? Digital evangelism sits right in the center of digital marketing, which has been around for quite some time. And I like to think of digital marketing as where the left side of the brain, the logics, the rational stuff, the data-driven stuff, the stuff that are seeped and cemented in, in theory, where that side of the brain meets the creative side of the brain, where left meets right, where science meets art. And that is pretty much what we are going to be focusing today. How can you, using logics, using facts, using all the theories of marketing and communication, how can you use those things, twin them, twin them with with creativity, with energy, with vibrancy, in order to influence people. That is the aim of it, to influence people's behavior, to influence their attitudes. And at the core of those things is to have them have a heart change, to be drawn closer to God, to come to know God more so that they can spend eternity with him. How can we do that? Before we get to that question, it's important that we establish the foundation. So digital evangelism, it's great. It has a whole lot of, of benefits and advantages, but it is limited. It's not a panacea. Digital evangelism solves communicative challenges. What do we mean by that? If people don't know something, digital evangelism can increase their awareness of it. If you're having a challenge and it's geared toward a lack of communication or ineffective communication, so you have a whole lot of nice things happening at Junamis, a whole lot of impactful things happening, but people somehow they do not know. Digital evangelism can help you with that. It's a communicative challenge. What digital evangelism cannot do, however, is to solve operational challenges. So let's say you are in a space now. I know that there was a recent changing of the guard. And let's say uh, the, the current situation on the ground is that there aren't enough programs that can help people to be inspired. That is not a communicative challenge. That's operational. Communication can't whip up programs like that. You will have to have now a team to work on coming up, conceptualizing these programs. And then digital evangelism can help you to spread the word about it so that more people come on board. I hope you get that distinction. The goal of this presentation and the goal of your marketing strategy, as Pastor would have alluded to earlier, is to position dunamis, to position dunamis as 
a church community who inspires, cares, who add value, and a church community who is unified. How do we do this? How do we do this? And that is why I'm here. This, I'm just setting the foundation here. We are going to be talking about how can Junamis, in a very real, tangible, impactful way, inspire people so that you care for others, so that you are adding value to the community of Brooklyn and certainly beyond, and show that you are unified. How can you do this? Do it strategically so that you can see the results of it. How? Of course, we have the objectives, some ideas of what you can do to inspire. You're talking about the, the inspirational videos. We to care now, you know, we're, we're talking about um, to ensure that you, you, you show that you actually are connected with people at the heart level. It's not just word of mouth. We're talking about how you impact the community through perhaps philanthropy, by participating in conversations that affect your community. How do you show you had value? What about the value pillar? We're talking about actual services. We're talking about counseling services, prayer lines, uh, the food basket. How do you add value to your community? And of course, a church that's unified, it cannot be hidden. One thing about unity, it is plastered over you. It's something that you can't fake. It cannot be faked. And so to show that you are a church that is unified, you'd have to do this in a particular way on digital so that it's authentic and people trust it when they see it. We're going to be talking about that in a few still setting the foundation. It's crucial that we do this. Which platforms? We talk about digital marketing. There are tons of digital platforms available to you. At this juncture, you don't want to set your, you don't want to stretch yourselves thin. Absolutely not. So you're already using YouTube. You're already on Facebook and you are going to start an Instagram page. I'm aware of this. So these these are the platforms you're focusing on. I know you would have already had a presentation on YouTube. So today we are focusing on Instagram and Facebook. You have the reasons there. They're in these platforms. They, they spread across generations, the Gen X, the Boomers, Millennials, Gen Z. And they allow you to reach these people through visually captivating content. And of course, you see the monthly users there. Now we're at the crossroad. We, we are setting the foundation. Let's get into building the building now. We are building. What is the roadmap that we'll, that we'll be using today? Today's roadmap takes into consideration one, branding, two, content, and three, what is your responsibility? What is your responsibility? Branding, content, and responsibility. Let's talk about branding. And this is where I'm going to place my PowerPoint in the editable version. As a matter of fact, I'm going to stop sharing. I'll edit it from my end. Those of you who are on Zoom, it's time to talk to me. Time to talk to me. We are talking about branding. When we talk about brand personality, when we talk about brand voice, when we talk about differentiation, when we talk about brand positioning, it's important that we know exactly what these things are. What are they? Let's start with brand personality. I'm going to call on some names now. Let's see, Elder Harris, Elder Harris, tell me, tell me, Elder, what are some words you would use to describe yourself? He's not present at the moment. All right, so who is speaking to me? Who was that? No, nobody? 
It's Margaret. Margaret, what is an adjective you would use to describe yourself? Pleasant. Pleasant. Anything else? Happy. Happy? All right. Uh, I want you guys to open your mic. Talk back to me. You know your church more than I do. So when, you, when we talk about the personality of dunamis, what are some adjectives that we can use to describe dunamis? Let's go. Personality traits of dunamis, Seventh-day Adventist Church. What are we talking about? So someone who would have not heard about dunamis, you have the responsibility to introduce them what do you tell them about your church? Rhonda has her hand. Rhonda. Rhonda, please open your mic and go ahead. I would say that Dunamis is a friendly church and an outgoing friendly church. Thank you yes. so much, Rhonda. Anybody else? You can even drop them in the chat if you wish. Personality of dunamis, adjectives, throw them in the chat. Open your microphones, let me know what they are. Passionate. Passionate. Anything Welcoming. Else? Welcoming. Welcoming. Keep going, keep going. Hospitable. Hospitable. Church of the Word, maybe? Ish, kind of? Yes. Definitely. Somebody said lively. 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 All right. So we, we, will, we will stick to these for now. So these are the personality traits of Dunamis. Let's talk about the voice. So funny story. My sister and I, our voice, the tone, our intonation, everything. It's so similar. Many times we trick our husbands and we even trick our mother. How would you describe the voice of Dunamis? Based on what you said about the personality traits, definitely it's a friendly voice. Uh, would you say it's a formal voice or it's a more casual voice? Which one? Rhonda, I see your hands, go ahead. I would say it's a more formal voice. Formal, friendly, but formal. Yes. Would, would you say it's an authoritative voice? I, I, I would. You yes. would? Mm -hmm. Authoritative. Any other adjectives to describe the voice? Would you say it's laid back? Would you say it's a confident voice? Hmm. Are you speaking to me? Anybody, but you can go ahead since your microphone is open. <laughs> Confident. Humble. Aha. Uh -huh. Humble. All right. So let's get to thank you so much, Rhonda. Rhonda, you're going to get a star at the end of the session. Oh. Let's go to the, to the third. We are building the brand. In this session, we are building the brand. So the person who will be in charge of your marketing, half the work would have already been completed, right? Let's go to the differentiation. When we talk about differentiation, we're talking about the fact that, yes, this is a church, but we have millions of churches across the face of this earth. And just like a business, you are in competition. You are competing for members. You want to position your church as, hey, this is the church where you ought to be. What is the uniqueness that you are going to tell people about Dunamis? What is so unique about you? What is your unique value? Let's hear it. Pastor, I'm going to call on you. Elders calling on you, the leaders, I'm calling on you. What makes Dunamis so unique? What's the big deal about Dunamis? Why, why don't I go to another church? There are plenty big. of Adventist church. Why Dunamis? Hello. Because at Dunamis, we, we do not just do programs. 
we provide an encounter with God. Ah, I love that. So it's about the encounter. Uh, I heard someone else, did I? I'm not going to pick on Rhonda again. I'm going to pick on Thompson, Telisha, Samantha, you three. What is, why do you come to Dunamis? What is so unique about it? It's family, uh, this is Thompson, it's family oriented. Family oriented. All right, anybody else? Archer, how about you, Tracy? All right, so we will stick with these two differentiations for now. It's an activity that is ongoing. I don't expect you uh, to give me all the pieces of the puzzle today, but it's an acti activity that should be completed because it will help you as you reach others, all right? Brand positioning, when we talk about brand positioning, we are simply talking about uh, the space that Dunamis occupies in the minds of people. Simply put, that's what we're talking about. And a huge part of brand positioning is the coming together of personality, of voice, of, of your unique value. And of course, even the platforms that you use. So we won't go into brand positioning just yet. Thank you so much for your, your interaction, uh, folks. We are going, now that we have set the framework for the brand, the Dunamis brand, it's now time to go into some practical things. Let's advance. Because you would have, a, you would have laid down your brand, now it's time to get real practical and decide on what your brand will look like. How are you going to, how are you going to show your personality? Because I mean, you, you're not, every time, even when you think about yourself, if you're inspirational, you don't just walk around and say, oh, I'm inspirational, I'm inspirational, I'm inspirational. No, it shows. It shows in the way you, you speak. Um, if you are lively, it may show in the colors you wear, for example. So let's go with your brand colors. How, what colors will you be dressed in? And this is crucial because it will determine how you look on these social media platforms. What colors are you dressed in? Dressed in. I know that purple is one of your colors and very fitting because there is a rule, there's a whole school called color psychology. And what it does, it tells you that Every single color, it's linked to certain moods, certain emotions. And these emotions are triggered by the colors, yeah? So purple, for example, we're talking, you see spirituality. So it's very fitting. But what I've noticed, especially as I scroll through your, your platform, is that Many times you, you twin purple with different colors. So for example, you'll twin purple uh, with, uh, first of all, let's talk about purple just for a moment. So you have purple, but you use different shades of purple. So you realize that the shades aren't really consistent. In addition to that, there are instances based on what I would have observed when you use purple, with other colors, complementary colors, of course. But sometimes those colors, it may be white, it may be black, it may be gray, you know, it's not consistent throughout. So in today's session, we are going to talk about your brand color package. How do you ensure that your brand colors aren't just complementary, but they're consistent. So when people see, when people see Puma, they see white, they see black. When people see Google, you know, they're seeing the, the, the yellow, green, red, the primary colors, I believe. When people see Dunamis, what do they see? Here's the equation real quick you would have already decided on your dominant base color, purple, fine. The next step is to decide on a neutral color. 
neutral color. We're talking about beige. We're talking about white. We're talking maybe cream. We're talking about black, gray, neutral colors. Decide on that and ensure that every single piece, every single creative that you develop, the color is consistent. In addition to your dominant base color, your neutral color, you may want to throw in an accent color. Maybe you want to, to communicate your friendliness. So we have the purple for spirituality. We have the white for, you know, honesty, uh, for simplicity as well. Perhaps your third color could be fuchsia. It could be um, a pinkish hue, you know, um, that's tied to sincerity and, and compassion. Or perhaps, based on what you would have said earlier, it could be um, something that's tied to friendliness. I believe friendliness is usually orange, um, a hue of orange. But whatever colors you choose, we're not just focusing on color psychology here. You have to ensure that the colors are also complementary. So, quick activity again. <laughs> I need your help. So you have decided on your main color, your dominant color. It's now time to decide on the shade. How do you get the shade right every time? I mean, there are tons of purples. How do you know uh, the exact shade of purple? Remember, we're talking about branding here. How does dunamis dress every day, yeah? The specific shade of color. How can you know? Pastor and anyone on the comms team, really, I'm going to need your help. This is a real quick hack. How do you ensure that you have the right shade every time? Go to Google. Purple. Yeah, we type purple hex code. Every color on the face of the earth is linked to a code. And this code is called the hex code. It's a unique code. So once you find the hex code for your shade of purple, I'm going to show you how you can insert it in Canva. I'm sure you guys use Canva based on my knowledge. Uh, and how you, you ensure that you use it without any hassle every time you're creating something. So purple hex codes, voila. Google is our best friend. We have a, a, a line of, of purple shades here. Advise me, which one of these purples would be the closest to your brand? Would it be this one? How about this one here? Tell me, would it be a violet? Which one would it be? I, I was thinking about, go ahead. No, that's fine. Go ahead, my dear. Go ahead. I was thinking about the colors when you were speaking about the brand and, and the personality and the colors of the church. And you mentioned the, the purple and that is the color of the pews and dunamis. Um, so that to me is the dominant color in dunamis, the purple uh, meaning spirituality and royalty and things like that. And then you mentioned that there should be other shades of neutral, like white. And then you said beige or cream. And when you said cream, I thought about the carpet and dunamis. Perfect. So, uh, I'm just going on, I'm feeding on what you're saying. And then you spoke about other colors. And now I'm wondering, well, how are all of those colors going to fit in the sanctuary? Or are we speaking about the overall color of the church building? Or are we speaking about the colors that the members of, will be wearing? Like as far as 
uniforms. Uh, like the ushers, we wear uniforms and our uniforms have different colors. Uh, so I was just wondering about that, but um, yes, yeah. That's a very good question. Excellent question. So when we talk about brand, it's something that runs throughout. And I'm mm -hmm. very happy that purple is a dominant color of the sanctuary and you have the cream carpets. But primarily, mm -hmm. well, within this context, uh, we're talking about the colors that the artwork, the graphic species oh. will take. So all the posters, for example, the installation poster of Pastor recently, even the, mm -hmm. the, the sessions, the three-week sessions, of course, this is the last of them. That mm -hmm. poster had purple, but you notice that the purple was a different shade from the initial pastor, pastor installation flyer. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about these colors, I'm not telling you to go change your uniform, but I mean, if you want to, that's great. It will definitely help to solidify the brand, the branding, but it's not absolutely necessary, not at this point anyway. Uh, what I'm saying is to use these colors consistently in your graphics uh -huh. on social. Remember, we're talking about social media here. And we're, I'm going to show you why in a few. Did that clear up your question? Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Awesome. You are welcome. And thank you for, for that question. So back to you. Tell me, which one of these shades of purple is close to the shade that's in the sanctuary or close to the shade that you usually associate with dunamis? I'll have to call on people. <laughs> no, you don't have to. Um, there, the images to the, to the left of the screen, that one could not, the second one. Okay, the, it looks more like the first, first shade, yes. All right, so we have nine, nine three. The, what is that about? Nine three zero zero double F. Yes. So nine thousand three hundred double F. Yes. Let's go over to Canva real quick. Canva, even in the free version, you are able to insert your brand colors so that every time you're creating a flyer, uh, you don't have to try to guess what exactly is your, is, your, is your brand color. You simply load Canva, you're on your homepage and you go to brand kit in the left panel. When you go to your brand kit, you scroll on down. These are my brand colors for my marketing consultancy. Salmon blue yellow for specific reasons, of course. But if you want to change it, you simply click on the first box. What was that number? I think it was 9,300 double F. Double F. And voila, it loads. And it's there. Let's go on white. So hex code for white. I'm not seeing my thing properly. All right, so hex code for white. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six Fs. So let's change this real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you see it loads right in the top corner, it loads white. And then you'd have to decide on your accent color. I don't know what it will be, all right? When you are creating your designs, we'll see how this works in your favor very, very easily. But for now, let us go back to all things branding. So you have decided on your brand colors based on your color psychology. You have found your hex code for these colors and you've ensured that it's now accessible very easily in Canva. What's next? What else do you consider as part of your branding? Type uh, fonts are very important. Typography are crucial to your branding. And like color psychology, they send a message. So 
as you are building your image, building your brand, it's important that you decide on the letters that you will use consistently, similar to your colors. There are a few letters here. Let's go down real quick. When we talk about fonts, typography, we're talking about things like serif. And serif, it's really saying that there are some fonts that have strokes that finishes them off at the end. And you can see those strokes circled. Those are serif. So serif simply means that they are without strokes. And you see it here at the bottom uh, of, of their screen. So if you decide that you want to use serif, there is also a psychology attached to it. Remember, based on what we would have said earlier, dunamis, yes, formal, but trendy, um, traditional, of course, uh, but trustworthy. Serif is an option. Serif is usually used for newspapers, for editorials. It's usually used for fashion in some spaces. It's also used for colleges, for financial companies as well, because it conveys trust, respect, tradition. Sans serif is usually attached to still trust, but instead of a traditional kind of um, tuning tradition with trust, it speaks definitively to twinning trust with modern. You see the difference? So it depends. What do you want to position Dunamis as? Trust, but traditional, or trust, but modern. You'll know which one to go to. And we have examples of world brands who would have used these two typographies. Doesn't end there. We also have slab serif. And slab serif, it pretty much, it pretty much says that, listen, there is a slab somewhere, a bold kind of thick, thick line within the letters. That's the slab. That's why it's called slab serif. It signifies confidence, boldness. And of course, we have the fun uh, kind of typography, display typography, if you want to uh, convey casual, fun, personality, full of vibrancy. You may want to consider a display font. If you want to convey fancy, happy, create, whimsical, creative, then you know you may want to go for the script font. Based on what you would have said earlier, what would be the top two font choices that you would consider for Dunamis? based on the branding activity that we went through. The personalities, that's what I'm referring to, the brand personality. Serif and, is it sans serif? Sans serif, well, it's French, sans serif. <laughs> so, sans serif. <laughs> uh, yes, and then these two are used in usually, because it's so easy to read too, you usually use them for your paragraphs. So for the smaller, fonts that you'll have in your graphic species. For the headlines, of course, you perhaps would want to use sans serif, maybe, and use uh, serif for your paragraph, or you can switch it. Depends on what you want for your brand and what you want to communicate. And this is just a recap. Now that we know exactly who we are, we know how we are dressed, the colors that we're using, the fonts that we're using, it's important that we now define who we're targeting, your target audience. So we're, we're living in a, a really a global space. So it's tempting to say, oh, my target audience is everybody, everybody in the world. I want members from Africa. I want members from Australia, Antarctica. You name it, we will welcome them at Dunamis. Of course, you will welcome them. But the truth is, while you will have audience members trickling from other regions from time to time, it's important that you establish your core target. It doesn't mean that you are not welcoming up others outside of those outside of the core jurisdictions. No, 
what it means is that your core emphasis is on these people. Of course, you, you are located in Brooklyn. So New York, of course, Brooklyn is going to be your core. Then you're focusing on the age, the gender, um, education, if, if necessary to your brand. We're talking about lifestyle motivation. What inspires people? What inspires those people whom you're targeting? And the keywords that they use, the keywords, the behavioral um, history of these individuals will determine what you do on social media. But it will come together in a few. Now that you know who you're targeting, it's important for you to build content that will resonate with them. The four E's. This will help you to ensure that your content is not monotonous. If every day you, there's a friend in your life and the friend keeps coming to you with the same old stories every single day, you become bored. You wouldn't be encouraged to want to spend time with them if every day all they talk about is um, current affairs, for example. What is happening in world news? They don't offer any encouragement. So even if you're going through a little, a little struggle time, it's all about current affairs, nothing, no versatility. You wouldn't be encouraged to spend time with them. Similarly, if you keep talking about the same things on your social media platforms, the same themes, people will not be encouraged to spend time with you on social. You treat your brand as you would treat humans. So step one, the first E of, of your content is to elevate trust. That's the first thing. Everything is built on trust. And so you want to show that, hey, do not miss. Yes, we're a church of the word, as you would have highlighted in the personality, the brand personality. But it goes beyond that. We're not just about preaching. We are thought leaders. We are authorities on the word of God. Perhaps you want to go there and show them by teaching your target audience about the things that affect them most. The things that affect them most most not everything just the things that affect them most the next e is encouraging everybody no matter how good we are at this thing called life we all have dull moments when we just need a little picker upper that's what we need so the third e is aligned to that in injecting inspiration encouraging people and of course the fourth e is a little tricky because people like to be, people are attracted to entertainment. And I know you're thinking, but this is a church. What are we talking about? Entertainment? No, we don't do that. Maybe you don't. So this E is really if your brand personality is aligned with it. And when we talk about entertainment, please don't think we're talking about all, oh, you, you know, those funny videos or... Uh, all about um, music or whatever it is. No, uh, perhaps your entertainment can look something like a pastor, for example. I know pastor is a man of a man of many jokes, right? So when he's preaching, he usually tells stories. Perhaps your entertainment can just be you pulling out one of pastor's stories and then twinning it to something that's connected to the word. That way you you're being authentic to your brand and you're not being overly entertaining or overly humorous because, hey, that's not you, that's not dunamis. So be careful with the entertainment part. And whatever you do, when you're encouraging, when you're educating, if you're, enter if you're putting in a little bit of entertainment here and there, you also have to ensure that it is authentically you. Stick to being authentic. Now that we know the four E's, so we know that we should encourage, we know that we should uh, entertain if you want to, if it's aligned with your brand, we know that we should encourage 
where do I find these ideas to build my content? The first thing that you may want to do is to ask yourself, what questions was I asked recently? And since, since you're a team, a comms team, perhaps a, a real practical way you can do this is to have a system in place where members will submit the questions that they're asked uh, frequently. So what happens after death? How do I overcome fear? Uh, what, are, what is spirit of prophecy? Why is Jesus the word personified? Those questions, you have a, a question bank almost, so you can pull your content ideas from. You can also conduct, consult the traditional blogs and books. Uh, you can ask for the questions as I would have alluded to. And of course, what's trending? What's the latest news story? Uh, is it aligned to something that you that that sits within your brand and what you talk about on social? Then of course, if it does, it's your opportunity to jump on it and insert your authoritative voice in the mix. And of course, you know, this list of varieties, the spice of life. So yes, you are asking people um, what they were asked recently, but it would be, remember we talked about monotony earlier. If you keep on presenting the information in the same way, so it's always a photo quote, or it's always a, uh, a FAQ or it's always an infographics, people will get bored. So variety, you will always want to ensure that you have a variety of content on your platforms. It's more engaging. It's more engaging by far. A part of content is not just variety, not just tapping into inspiration, the four E's, encouraging, educating, uh, but also ensuring that you have a call to action. And a huge part of content too, I don't want you to miss this. This is a question that I'm often asked. Jan, how can I keep up with creating content? So let's say I post about fear today. Am I going to have to post overcoming fear today? Do I have to post about um, something totally different every single time? Do I always have to find new themes? The answer to that question is no. In managing your social media platforms, you always have to ensure that you optimize your content. And this is a cool hack. So let's say, this week you're focusing on, on fear. Today you focused on fear and overcoming fear. That's your broad idea. And you're thinking, all right, so I talk about fear today. What am I going to talk about tomorrow on social? What, create, what graphics am I going to create? The answer is simple. In optimizing your content, you find different angles. So think about a news story. You find different angles to the same news story. That's what media houses do every time. You take over, you transfer that skills, that skill to social, the space of social media. So open your mics. The theme is fear. Big broad fear. What are the various angles you could take fear so that you have a variety of content on your social and you don't have to think about changing your theme every day? Tell me, fear, what is an angle of fear that you could take? Somebody, anybody? Maybe, All right, maybe, let me start off. Overcoming fear. Okay, go ahead. Oh, yeah, maybe we could take it from the angle, maybe fear personified. So fear is basically telling us how it affects us. All right. Or how it so, grows. Mm -hmm. All right. So one piece could be five steps to overcoming fear. Yes. The next piece could be how do you know you are fearful? Mm-hmm. A third piece could perhaps be, uh, how do you 
how what did you say how how is fear personified yes 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 that could be our, a third piece yes or what what um what habits do we have that increase fear in our lives okay so do you have a garden of fear you know uh what are the habits are you are you nurturing fear how to know that you're nurturing fear uh five things that people who are fearful keep saying to themselves we just listed about six content ideas so that is how you ensure that you have a variety of content without always having to think all right so i already spoke did a post on fear last week and i really can't do anything on fear for the next few months no as long as you optimize it then you're good to go because and it's not just a hack it's really about how humans how we uh, digest information the truth is if someone tells you something once you might not get it but if they tell it to you in a different way and the teachers in the house can allude to this if they tell it to you in a different way uh, you might soak it up a little bit easier and a little bit more so that is essentially transferring that that kind of um, knowledge about teaching and information consumption to the world of social media I'm cognizant of the time so let us let us advance let us advance to so we spoke about the content ideas what about our captions or captions, so these are the statements that you will post along with your, your graphics, right? <sighs> Caption, especially if you are not a natural writer, it can be very difficult. The key thing to caption writing and writing effective caption is to tap into ideologies. And by ideologies, I mean uh, the things that people love the things that people hate. Uh, so some ideology, everybody wants to be happy. Uh, nobody wants to be fearful. Nobody wants to feel as though they are worthless. Everybody wants to succeed. Everybody wants to grow. So those are ideologies. So you identify a few ideologies and this is the com, the com for the comms team in particular who and the, for the members who are going to be posted on social. We identify a few ideologies. And let's say we're, we're sticking with the fear concept. So you have a, a piece coming up on fear and you think, all right, so nobody wants to sit in fear all day long. No, people want to grow, right? So we're talking about the, the ideology of growth here. A caption, a caption um, idea could be, you could perhaps start with a question. Tired of being bombarded by fear? Or you could start with a statement. It's time to grow out of, the, out of your fear. Or it's time to kick fear to the curb. Uh, tapping into that growth overcoming kind of ideology. And then you go on down to explaining, perhaps you have a stat about fear. 95% of people, this is not credible, I'm just making things up. 95% of, 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 of individuals were found to be fearful or there's an increased fear because of the pandemic. Once you know the ideology, then it's no time for you to get creative with crafting the, the, the statements that will complement the graphics that you have. And then a graphic, a graphic piece is not complete without a call to action. Always remember that, not complete without a, a call to action. And this is when you tell people what to do. Don't assume they, they will do what you want them to do. If you want them to share, if you want them to comment, if you want them to contact you, then do it. Tell them that you want them to do a particular thing. So we've been talking about graphics for quite some time. Uh, this slide speaks to uh, just some tips that you can use. And we're going to do an expert, uh, a little activity in a few. You want to use your action photos 
you want to keep your messages, the actual message on the graphic short and sweet. You want to, of course, use your call to action. You want to ensure that your purple, your white, and that accent color that you'll, you'll decide on later on is featured in your, in your graphics. So this graphics was recently created. We are now going to, as we wrap, we are going to see how we could enhance this graphics a, a little bit more. So let's talk about branding. Colors. So we spoke about, we didn't talk about logo, but the logo was on the screen. And I know you have created your own logo. So a part of branding is that sign, that symbol, that as soon as you look at it, you know that, okay, it's Adidas. Okay, it's Puma. Uh, okay, it's Dunami Seventh-day Adventist Church. You always want to include your, your logo on the pieces. I see you have your name. So if this is your new logo, it's fine, right? But as long as your logo is there, your logo has to be there. Of course, you have your purple. Uh, is there a call to action on this flyer? Call to action. Remember your call no, to action. There's none. There's, there's none. none. There is none. So that's one way we could enhance this flyer. So I see you have uh, the address here. You have the, the Facebook self. But what do you want people to do with them? Do, they, do you want them to connect with you? So perhaps a call to action would be connect with us. You know, uh, you always want to have your call to action. Uh, of course, you have your, your uh, quote here. You have your past. So let's see how we could enhance this a little tops more. Just a little tops. I'm going to ask you, Pastor, may, could I have an additional 10 minutes? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah? All right, thank you. So let's go on to the, the creation of the, of the actual flyer real quick. All right, so let's go back to Canva. So we already have our, our branding colors here, brand colors. So for Canva, oops, let me move this over here. The first thing you want to do is to create your design, right? Let's say it's an Instagram post, for example. Remember, we are recreating that flyer. So we have the image of Pastor folding his arms, right? Based on what we said here, action photos are the best, usually unless it's for an installation or it's a profile pic, of course, you know, your standard images would be okay. Uh, but for a photo quote, uh, you want to see how you can capitalize on an action photo. And the, the reason is simple. It triggers emotion. It, it helps, it draws people in a little bit more than the usual profile pic or something like that. So with that information, let's go, let's go back to Canva. And we're going to find another picture. I posted upon this picture while I was preparing for you. Post up on this action picture here. Uh, oh, you let me. Right, I have to maneuver this share screen real good. I'm switching from tabs to tabs. So we have this action photo that I found of Pastor. We're going to use this. The first thing you want to do uh, is to perhaps remove the background from this image because if you don't then when you place it on the, the canvas, we're calling the, the, the white piece in Canva, canvas. When you place it on the canvas, it will be square, it will not look so nice, all right? And let me show you, let me give you an actual demonstration of what it would look like. So we have, we have our canvas here. We want to change the background color. Remember the brand colors that we had inserted in Canvas? Instead of trying to search where they are, 
they're right here. You don't have to search. By the click of a button, it appears. So we place pastor's image there. With this background, it looks, it's not clean. So you may want to remove the background. Here's a cool hat. Remove background. So you go to, this is my, my tool that I always use. Remove background from image. You load it. You upload your image. We have pasta here. Voila, the background is gone. Background gone, we download our image. We open it just to ensure that it's all good. We copy and when we paste it in Canva this time, instead of having the wall, you realize that we have pasta in his elements which is of course cleaner. We position it. We may want to just position it over here because remember you now we are rejigging the photo code. We want to do it here. We want to position it to the right because he is pointing to the left. With this, we have quite a bit of space to insert the actual quote that he's going to, that we are going to insert. How do we do this? We insert text. By this time, you would have known what your, your brand, your brand font is. So pastor said, don't mistake your position for punishment. Don't add people whom God has deleted. Don't mistake your position for your punish. Oh Lord, don't mistake your position for punishment. Position for punishment. So this is us. Don't mistake your. We copy and we paste the the, the text box. Let's see. And you'll see in a moment why I didn't continue to write the rest of the statement. Don't position. We want to highlight certain keywords because people, especially on social, uh, they consume things very quickly. So you want certain keywords to jump out at them, right? So position is one. Don't mistake your position. Punishment is another, right? So we go, don't mistake your mistake, your position, don't mistake your position for, and we may want to put four here. And then we are going to place punishment in this text box, just because we want it to jump out at people. We want it to be prominent. Don't mistake your position. And then we can play around with the, the, the font color. We would definitely want a white on this background. Uh, so we put everything in white. Then now we play around with the sizes. Remember, certain things must be prominent. We may want to bold as part of allowing certain things to be more prominent than the others. We may want to bold punishments. We may want to bold position. And then it's now time to increase the font size of these keywords. Let's put it up to about 60. Don't mistake your position. And as you design, you will realize that you will have to be moving things around uh, just, just to, to ensure that the piece, the piece is intact, really. Don't mistake your position. For this particular background, uh, you may want to do a gradient vibe. So let's go to gradient real quick. Gradient. 
we're searching for all the things. And the beautiful thing about Canva is that you have some things that are just pre-prepped. <laughs> That's it. They're prepped for us and all we have to do is manipulate the colors. We're looking for gradients. This is a gradient. Let's see if the colors can be changed. Some of the colors cannot be changed. Uh, and so you want to ensure that the one you select can actually be changed to reflect your branch color. This one, as you're seeing, the color symbol is not at the top. So you realize that it's an actual image and you cannot manipulate the colors. So you go back to elements and you search again, gradient until you find one that can be manipulated. So we delete the first one. Then you see the color of the box is here. So you realize that it can actually be changed, right? Oops, so we delete the background. Don't worry, the text is still there. We draw the, the, the sides to cover the, the, um, the full space of the Canva. We're sticking to our brand color, so our brand color is not blue, it's white. We change the gradient, and then we send everything, we send the, the gradient box to back, past our peers. Since we would have swapped the background, we need to swap the color of the fonts to maybe black. And then at the end of it all, you know, you'd insert your open and close quotation marks. Then you would have your call to action, which would be connect with us for now. It's going to be connect with us. We are going to reduce the size. Oopsie. Reduce the size of the call to action. We don't need it to be bigger than the, the quote at all. We don't need it to be that small either. Connect with us. You may want to include a button and place it behind. And by button, what I mean is that is that um, shape that usually, well, you'll see it in a moment. <laughs> this button here. You place it under, well, behind the call to action. You may want to change the color. Let's say your, your, um, you would prefer a blue button. You can always change the color, right? Uh, depending on what your your graphics, what the layout is like, and then of course. You can insert your call to your, your various social media handles and the spots, the, the location of your church rather. So very simply, uh, you realize that by just removing the background, by repositioning the words, by making some words prominent and by changing the, the background to a gradient, you're already getting uh, a more impactful and also an, a, a, an image that will resonate a little bit more than what you originally had. We can't finish this flyer in today's session. I'm very, very cognizant of the time. I just wanted to show you what using big, bold letters can do don't feel that you have to stick to the same font size. So if there is a, a quote and you, you have to ensure that all the words in the quote are the same sizes, you do not have to. It's all about what would jump out at your target audience. Because remember, they're scrolling. So you want to put something in front of them that in one glance, they can see pos position and punishment and go, oh, what is this about? Pause a little, read, and then, of course, like or do the call to action that you told them to. As we close, as we close, I want to 
bring to your attention just an audit of what your your Instagram page as you as I know for sure that you are going to be launching your Instagram page real soon. I want to show you all the tips, all the things that your Instagram page should definitely have. I'm going to be bringing up my Instagram so that you visual of what should be on your Instagram page. So let's go. All right. Okay, that's not the, that is not it. So this is the Instagram. And for your Instagram, you want to ensure you of course have the name the name of your your instagram right ensure that it's to your brand so it has to include dunams and it has to include seventh day adventist whether the abbreviated form sda or spelling it out right uh, in addition to that you have to also ensure that your Instagram homepage speaks to the fact that uh, you are doing a particular thing. So what are the keywords? What are the keywords that is aligned to your brand? So church, um, inspiration, uh, word. You think about those keywords and you ensure that in your description, at the top, now you're seeing Christian, wife, educator, alumna of London School of Economics. Marketing is my genius, creativity is my tool. Those, those keywords, marketing, create. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it seems as though we're having a little technical difficulties with our presenter. We ask for your patience. Uh, for those of you who are still here, even on the social media platforms, you can uh, note your questions. And of course, when she returns, she will answer those questions. She's back, Pastor. Okay. Sorry about that. I had uh, a pause in connecting there. Um, this is the last thing we're going to be talking about. So let's go back to the Instagram page. I believe I was at the profile picture. So your profile picture, you want to ensure that it's something clear. Um, you want to capture perhaps an image, perhaps uh, an image of your church. Perhaps you want to include the, the logo maybe of your church that you would have created. In addition to that, you also want to ensure that even in your bio, there's a call to action. A call to action uh, that tells people what exactly you want them to do. So do you want them to contact you? My call to action, as you can see, is follow for tips. I want you to follow me for marketing tips. Your call to action could maybe be contact us for... Bible study. And it all depends on the campaigns that you're running. So uh, if it's a case where you want to push your live stream on Sabbath, perhaps that could be your call to action. If it's a case where you want to build your contact database, contact us would be your call to action. So it all depends on what you want to do. In addition to that, you also wants to ensure that you have your story highlights. 
And let me scroll on down. So one of my story highlights is marketing tips. You want to highlight certain stories that you that you upload. And by stories, I mean those those creatives that you I'm sure everybody's on WhatsApp. Everybody might not be on Instagram, but everybody's on WhatsApp. It's similar to your WhatsApp status, just on Instagram, right? And usually you use these kinds of, of um, content for quick updates, for quick behind the scenes. So you're going out in the, in the field to do a prayer walk. You want to show that, you know, it's basically current information. So things that are going on now that you would post on your status, right? So you want to ensure that the stories, you have your story highlights. Your story highlights, of course, you can, have, you can add multiple. So one story highlight could be a Bible study. One could be community outreach. One could be inspiration. And so when persons come on your page, they can simply click the highlight and it will take them through the various stories that you would have uploaded. And of course, um, bring them up to speed on what exactly you've been up to and what exactly you've been sharing. The reason you need to create, to decide on your brand color is this. For Instagram, and there's a debate about um, color scheme, you want to ensure that your colors are consistent throughout your timeline. By, by deciding and identifying your brand colors, this is what you are achieving on your social. Everything is consistent. They, it, it somehow makes the page look a little bit more organized, but a lot more organized. And that is what you want to communicate as well. As we wrap, is there any question that you have that you may want me to go through to answer? I'd be more than happy to do that now. If not, then thank you for listening and thank you for indulging me. I know I went um, a little bit over time, but thank you for your patience, your attentiveness, and over to you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate uh, your candid and wonderful, succinct and expert uh, presentation today. We were blessed um, to have had you. And of course, I particularly like the fact that you not only lectured, but you also demonstrated and walked us through, modeled the way. And they say modeling will always produce a better learning circumstance. So thank you again. Um, I don't know if any of our friends here, or family members will have any comments, any questions that uh, you would want to post or pose to our presenter, anyone? Um, if, if, if there's any on YouTube as well, you could take those or Facebook if there are any. Okay. All right. So thank you so much, uh, Sister Salmon. Uh, thank you for, for your time and your expertise. And I want you to know that when you see our flyers, my installation flyer, the fixing focus flyer, the evangelism in the new era flyer, those are her uh, babies. She indeed designed those flyers and we're grateful for her expertise to this church. She has been so kind to us, whereas we would have to pay a lot of money for those. She has been kind so far and we bless God for that. Thank you so much everyone for joining us on YouTube, on Facebook, uh, on Zoom. We want you to know that you are precious to us. You are important to us. We love all of you. And we wanted to know that we are here to serve you in any way possible. Reach out to us um, at our Facebook page uh, or leave a message in our YouTube. We will serve you in whatever way. Our numbers are there. Reach out to us and we'll be happy to serve you. Uh, did you want to say something else, um, Janiel? 
just one thing. We didn't talk about everybody's responsibility. So we have the top team doing all of these magnificent things that do not miss. But in order for the message to be promulgated, every single member of the church has a responsibility. And that responsibility is to share the content that, that is posted. Everything that is posted on your social media platforms, you have a to ensure that it reaches your friends and your friends' friends. And that is how you will not just reach New York or Brooklyn, but reach the entire world. That was crucial. I had to put that in because many times the Cubs team is working hard, but the, the support is not being garnered from the members. So everybody has a part to play. That's excellent. it. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And we cannot overemphasize that um, and of course I know that the Dunamite family we have been doing some of that but uh, with this training we will regroup and do much better as we get the message of God to the world encircling the globe with the message of Jesus soon coming all right thank you so much thanks again um, Mrs. Salmon for being here for presenting for guiding us and for being our expert today Thanks to all of you who join us on Facebook, as I said before, YouTube, uh, those of you in Zoom, wherever you're from. I know persons are watching from out of Canada as well and all over. We bless God for you. And we ask you to join us on uh, Sabbath as we continue our fixing focus. And then for the month of November, we'll be doing more training at 3.30. Uh, we'll be going into our spiritual encounter our deliverance part of our training. And next week, Sabbath afternoon, around this time, Dr. Edley Benoit will be teaching us how to fight in the spiritual realm and how to see deliverance and blessings from God, how to tap into the resources of heaven through connection with God. You cannot afford to miss it. And we have a lineup for you. you can't afford to miss it. Stay tuned to this place because this is where the power resides. God bless you. Have a great afternoon.